demons are real. There's genuine evil in this world. I've seen it with my own eyes. And there's always an equal and opposite force. If demons are real, then God must be real. Some of the things that are happening in the world today is truly the work of the devil. By extension, God must be real. There's no way it can, the devil can exist without him. And if you want to argue whether the devil exists or not, then you're not taking a very close enough look at the world. The people who are defending the matrix and trying to report its ideas, these people are genuinely, truly evil in their hearts. They don't care about humanity. They don't care about free speech. They're not pro-human. All they care about is trying to enforce ideologies regardless of how it affects people negatively. They're truly full of hate, and that makes them evil people. By extension, God must exist, and God inspires certain men to resist, like myself. You have to make God happy. God, if, let's imagine God is a man. If I'm a man and I have, I have 10 people who work for me, or 10 children, my favorite one is to be the one who does the things that I know or do, who, who acts in a way that I am happy with, right? So if I had 10 children and they're all acting different ways, my favorite one's to be the one that adheres to the rules and adheres to the tenets that I've set out. If I say you should act this way and you do act that way, then I'm gonna be, a, he's gonna be my favorite child. God, I'm God's favorite because I act true to God. And I act true to God because I know I'm genuinely a good person. I wouldn't snake anybody in the world for, for $10 billion. Absolutely 0% chance. I'm not out here doing anything treacherous. I'm not a traitor. I don't do anything bad. The Matrix can say I'm a bad person because they're liars. I know I'm a good person. I know I live with a pure heart. The reason I'm God's favorite is because I, I'm out here doing exactly the things I said earlier in this stream. I wake up, I'm on time with a firm with a firm handshake. I stick to my word. I, do, I work hard. I give my best to everything I do. I'm honest. That's all it takes to be God's favorite. And if you're truly those things, you're not out here trying to do some quick buck. I sit here and look at every decision I make and I genuinely sit and think I am being analyzed and I'm being watched by another power. Is this gonna benefit me in the long run? The most disgusting thing, the thing that God is most unhappy with is treachery. Because treachery, the reason it is so frowned upon in the Bible and the Quran throughout all of history, traitors were hated the most and had the most heinous and disgusting punishments is because treachery can't be stopped. I'm a big dangerous man. If I see my enemy on the street, I'm gonna know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be ready for it. Treachery, treachery will take out anybody. The point I'm making is that's why it's so, such a disgusting act. So I'm God's favorite because I act in a way that God looks at me and he's proud of me. God looks at me and goes, I made men to be X and Andrew's doing what he's supposed to do. Andrew's trying to become the strongest, richest, most important, most competent version of himself. He's trying to educate and inspire other men to do the exact same thing. I like Andrew. I'm lucky. God loves me. You're God's favorite because you decide to be. You have to show him that you're out here doing the things you're supposed to do. Did God create man for you to sit, be lazy? Did God create man for you to be weak? Is that why he made you? Uh, if you think it is, then you could sit there and suffer the consequence of being unlucky your entire life. But if, if you understand that that's not why he made you, that's not why you're here. Do you have a duty, a masculine imperative to be the best possible version of yourself, then God's going to be happy with you. That's how it works. I sit there and I live with, a, I have a genuine moral compass. Of course, I'm his favorite. That's why he protects me and provides me. That's why I can get banned and attacked by the matrix in every single possible way. And I have larger streams than I've ever had before. That's, that's why I don't panic. We go to God when we have problems, but when everything's going good, we don't thank him enough. And that's one thing I try and make sure I never do. I don't pray to God to ask for things. I pray to God to say, thank you for things I already have. That's the, one of the first mindset things I tried to change is to show gratefulness to him. By extension, I show gratefulness to my life. Gratitude is the number one way to become successful because the more grateful you become, the more things God will give you to be grateful for. If this God wakes you up every day, it's not you that's waking up. It's God allowing you to wake up. So if you ever stop to just thank him for everything he's done for you, he will add to that list of stuff that you can thank him for. Instead of complaining about what's going on, man, I got to go to work today. Man, I got these kids. Remember when you wanted a job? Remember when you wanted a baby? He not gonna keep giving you stuff if what you got you can't handle already. Spend five minutes complaining and you have wasted five. Surely they will soon haul you off into a financial desert and there let you choke on the dust of your own regret. It's a deadly disease. If you don't think it's bad, ask the children of Israel. Story says, children of Israel were slaves. God performed a series of dazzling miracles and got them out. Remember the story? Heading for the promised land. Tragedy of the story? They never got there. Reason, from day one, 
they started to complain. They whined and cried and griped about the food. They whined and cried because it was too far, too cold, too hot, too miserable. Whined and cried for years. Finally, God said, I've had it, trip canceled. Which I think means two things. Indulge in this long enough, you get your future canceled. And I guess it also means even God himself can only take so much. Our promise is taking longer to develop because we're complaining instead of praising. You kill more blessings by not being grateful. That's the number one blessing blocker, lack of gratitude. Right now, what are you grateful for? Nothing, brother. There's nothing good in my life right now. That's pretty freaking pathetic. You can't find anything in your life to be grateful for right now. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I made it this far. It's not what I wanted, but it is working. And if you can't say that, come on and let me take you to the, the homeless places. Because sometimes you don't have gratitude because you got too much. But in the absence of an example of worse, you won't appreciate better because it ain't best. Listen to me, y'all. Wake up every day and start being grateful for just your life, your kids, your food, your clothes, your money. And then immediately after that, you'll have a better day. He started giving you more stuff. When you look back over your life, you can see the faithfulness of God. Times where he made a way where you didn't see a way. You didn't get to where you are by yourself. He's been working behind the scenes in your life, lining up the breaks that you need. That's why I take time every day to say, God, I recognize your goodness. I know I didn't get here by myself. You chose to bless me. If you knew all the things God has been orchestrating behind the scenes to get you where you are, you would be amazed. He said in verse 11, beware that in your plenty, you do not forget the Lord your God. Don't let it become so common that you don't recognize it was my goodness, that you don't take time to thank me for what I've done. Now, a lot of people say, Steve, I don't have time to do that. You do have time. If you don't have time, you should make time. But if you don't recognize it's his goodness, the same God that opened the door can close the door. If somebody come to your house every day and ask you for a cup of sugar, and they take the sugar and they just walk off. How many days can this person get this cup of sugar and never say thank you? Not many. Have you forgotten what God has done? That's what causes blessings not to last. He's the reason your company chose you over somebody else. He's the reason your health turned around. Don't take it for granted. It wasn't a lucky break. That was the goodness of God. Take time to acknowledge his goodness. Not only are you thanking him, but you're reminding yourself, I didn't get here by myself. God opposes the proud, but gives favor to the humble. Gratitude changes your perception. Your perception changes your existence. If you're going to continue to go further, you have to remember it is the Lord your God that got you to where you are, and it is God that's going to keep you going. Gratitude is the number one principle of success. You can start that today. That will change your life. Try it. I dare you. The scripture says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Don't get discouraged because where you are is much smaller than what's in your heart. It's easy to think, well, Joel, when I see some growth, then I'll give it my all. No, you have to give it your all right where you are. Stay faithful. Your time is coming. There's this thing people think that, like, I'll be happy when. Once I get, like, this amazing home, or once I get this, or an amount of money, then I'll allow myself some happiness. The problem is, the finish line always moves. And so for me, I want to live in a state of being grateful and blissful now, not waiting for some future place or date that may never arise. You must live in a spirit of gratitude. Choose to be happy in spite of life's challenges. Viktor Frankl, he said the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude 
in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way living in the moment getting everything we can out of where we are in the moment where we are right now you can't wait till you receive the promise you have to thank God that the answer is on the way say thank you that I'm healthy in your finances maybe you're struggling all through the day thank you that whatever I touch prospers and succeeds when you thank God in advance for the answer that's what keeps you encouraged Praise makes you strong. Praise keeps you moving forward. So if you don't learn this principle to thank God in advance, you won't have the strength you need to wait for the promise. You have to trust the process. While you're waiting, things are growing. If God showed us what he was up to, that wouldn't take any faith. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. God says if you won't let what you see talk you out of what you know, then your due season is coming. God knows what he's doing. If it hasn't happened yet, it hasn't been the right time. Your right time is already scheduled. We're all going to wait, but learn to wait the right way. Wait with praise, thanking God in advance that it's on the way.